Okay, good morning. Welcome to church. I just love that when it goes silent, when that countdown comes to nearly uh, one or two. Uh, it's great to have you here this morning. Good to see some friends in for the first time. Good to see some people back for after a while. Would you stand with me? We're going to pray. We're going to have a great day in church again, aren't we? Anybody enjoy last week? Some of you cried a lot. That was good. God's dealing with our lives, isn't he? Putting us back together again. We're a church. This is a safe place. I keep saying that to people. If you want to cry here, you want to share here, we're not going to be telling everybody. We're just going to be loving you because something of God is in the house. And we just pray for an outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Let's pray right now. I don't know where you find yourself this morning, but just open your heart to the Lord. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you that we are your children. And Lord, in this moment, I just pray that you just encounter us, that, Father, we just sense your presence, that, Father, we wouldn't just come to have a service, but we'd have come to have a relationship with you, that we come to talk with you, that you talk to us, that you're Jesus, that you'd overwhelm us with your goodness and with your blessing. So I pray for those today that couldn't be here because they're poorly, maybe watching online, for those who are online that need you today, for those, Lord Jesus, that just need a touch right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you release your anointing and blessing in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's praise the Lord together. Thanks, guys. Psalm 68, verse 32 says, O kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. To him who rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens, behold. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God for his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Are you ready this morning to join with millions and billions of people who gather this together today as the church to bring God his praise, to give him his thanksgiving? Are you ready this morning? Let's start to, before we even start to sing somebody else's words, let's start to sing our own words or speak our own words. That we thank God for everything he's done, for his goodness, for his kindness. For his mercy, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
together. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you.
something just rose up in my heart while we were singing that refrain what the enemy meant for evil you've turned it for my good some people have been through it this week I know in church but we're going to just take the note and we're going to sing that as I say a cappello and we're going to declare it we're going to sing it as a prayer what the enemy meant for evil you're turning it right now for my good what was out to destroy me what was out to humble me what was helped to kick me the Lord is raising me up and he's working all things together for my good because he loves me this morning so just sing that what the enemy meant for evil let's just sing that refrain over and over again let's let, let it build let faith build in your heart today say God I believe that you are turning my circumstances around what the enemy meant for evil you are turning it for my good right now bless the Lord sense in your heart that things are just terrible things are just dragging you down just lift your heart to heaven right now i'm going to pray for a supernatural peace to enter in this place right now not that our encouragement is one thing but the touch of the spirit of god is just something else father right now as we've been declaring what the enemy meant for evil lord your word says it's the thief that comes to steal kill and destroy but you have come that we might have life and life to the full I just pray for that supernatural peace to invade this place right now. Lord, this morning we are believing that your word is going to put some of us back together again. And that we're going to leave this place completely different in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord.
bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We sing of your goodness, Lord. Sing of his love forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. been good to us and been faithful Like Samuel of old, Lord, as we come around your word now, we pray. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Thank you, guys, for leading us into the presence of the Lord this morning. On the 3rd of February, it's a Saturday. Can you put this in your diary? We're going to have a huge church clean-up. Uh, we're going to empty the loft. We've got ch- we had church mice in the loft. But I want you to know they weren't poor. We we believe in the blessing of God in this church. And they ate all our candles, mate. They were not poor. They were fat mouse. So they've all gone. um, But uh, we're going to clean out the loft. We're going to do some stuff around church. Josh is preparing a list. So if you can come. We won't start too early because I don't get out of bed early on a Saturday morning. But we'll be here about 10 o'clock. We'll announce it nearer the time. But we're going to have a skip. So we can put some of the rubbish in, and we're going to clean the windows, we're going to do the car. Well, listen, we get, get, we're getting this church ready for more people, aren't we? When I, when I got here this morning, I walked around trying to work out how many more chairs I can get in here. We, we are believing for a move of God in these next few weeks and months that is just going to be beyond where we've ever been before, so bless the Lord. So this week is prayer meeting Tuesday at 7.30. There's no Bible school this week. That's the following week. But thank you for those that came to Bible school, those that watched online. In, uh, on Gary and Debbie's TV, I was in HD, praise the Lord. <laughs> so you have to make sure you have a shave because otherwise it catches all of that stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? But uh, the Lord's good, isn't he? And he's gracious. Now, I'm glad what God has been doing in the lives of people in this church. And uh, one of the people that I, I love... And I know that God has touched in a powerful way. Is Ryan. And, he's, you know, he's, Ryan's been preaching up in Dudley in the town centre. Which is good. So he's going to come and read the Bible to us this morning. Come on, Roy. Bless you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> he didn't know till he got here this morning, does he? <laughs> good morning. I'm going to read from the... I'm going to read from the Word of God, and it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff, that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. I'm finished there and I just want to say a quick prayer because I feel like I have to. So Father, I pray right now that you would search all our hearts and that we would surrender any parts of our lives that we haven't given to you, given over to you yet. That you would crucify our wills and let yours be done. That you would reveal yourself to us in new ways. That you would transform and renew our minds and pour out your spirit on us, Lord. And that you would stop any attack or plans of the evil one. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well done. That's it. Some, um, 
some years ago, we, we, we started a preaching academy for people who used to go out and preach in other churches. I just have a feeling that academy is about to restart. Uh, but not with people that have been here for a lifetime, but by people who have just got a whole lot of Jesus and want to share the gospel. That's good, isn't it? So we want to train and release preachers, teachers, and those that want to follow Jesus. Well, we're on the second part of what I call Mind Matters. We're looking at mental health, and I did say to you on last Sunday morning that I am not a health professional. Um, I don't have any expertise in this area, but we know one thing about God's Word, don't we? The truth always sets us free. And if we're, ever there was a time in our nation that the Word of God needs to be proclaimed and preached, it's right now. And the title for my message this morning is, Don't Be Anxious. Don't be anxious. I want to read to you two scriptures, one written in, to the book of, in the book of Philippians by Paul, and the other one is the Sermon on the Mount by Jesus, but both say exactly the same thing. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And then Jesus declares this, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food and body more than clothing? I went onto the Mind website, Mind are a good mental health charity, and they talk about how anxiety does not just affect our mind, but it affects our body. And uh, there's some stuff that it says there. It says, if you have anxiety, you may have a churning feeling in your stomach. Anybody been there? It says, you might feel lightheaded or dizzy. Pins and needles. Anybody identified him in this this morning? You might feel restless and unable to sit still. Headaches, backaches, aches and pains. It's all doom and gloom, isn't it? Fast breathing, a fast and thumping irregular heartbeat, sweating or hot flushes, sleeping problems, grinding your teeth, especially at night, nausea, needing the toilet more or less than you used to. Now, you never thought you'd hear the pastor talk about the toilet this morning, but there it is. <laughs> Having panic attacks. Anxiety starts in our mind, but it affects our health. I believe that, you know, in this generation, we are seeing a pandemic of anxiety, especially among our younger generation. But let's not pretend for a moment that anxiety is something that was only invented five years ago or ten years ago. Jesus on the Sermon of the Mount teaches about this reality of life. It's real, it's debilitating, and the Lord wants us set free from it, doesn't he? Jesus, as he preaches... To the, about the parable of the sower talks about the seed falling on different ground and in one of, the, one of the parts of that parable he says this the cares of this life are like weeds that choke out the spiritual life anxiety can cripple us in our mind but also in our body and it can actually stop us moving on with God but I believe this morning God wants to teach us how to deal with anxiety and this is not an easy preach and it's not like, it's not, I'm not giving you a tablet, you take it, everything's going to be all right. But as we've been saying for a long time in this church, this is advanced citizenship to be a Christian. And we take up our cross daily and follow the Lord. And we implement his word and we stop in prayer and we believe God. And he changes things in our lives. So Jesus takes the time out to teach the people about worrying. And he says this, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, reap or store in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? Can any one of you, by worrying, add one single hour to his life? Why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor will be dressed like one of these. So if God knows how to close the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not how much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need. 
Jesus is teaching the crowds here that mankind is the pinnacle of God's creation. The Bible says that God created man and woman in his own image. And then he goes on to make a comparison. He goes on to show us what we need to see, which is clear, two clear examples. First, he talks about the garden birds, and then he talks about the wild flowers. You know what? Birds don't worry about shopping at Tesco, do they? Have you noticed that? Have you ever seen a bird sitting there in your garden, scratching his head and wondering if he's got enough money for the big shop? You haven't, have you? does not happen. Have you ever seen Mr. Robin turn to Mrs. Robin with a credit card bill and say, what, you've been buying from Amazon? Have you ever seen that in your garden? You never have. It happens in our house. Anybody there? Any, any brothers with me? When the highlighting pen comes out, it's time to run, okay? What have you been buying? So the, the, the birds, even though they're ten a penny, even though like, you don't even consider a garden bird being any value, God looks after them. Not one of them goes hungry. And then he goes on to talk about the flowers. He said, do you think the flowers are worried about what they wear? Have you ever seen a flower look down and say, this blouse is a bit tatty? I think we need to shop down Merry Hill. Have you ever seen them do that? Have you ever seen a, a, a flower look down and say, I put half a stone on over Christmas, I can't get these trousers on? Have you ever seen that? Because flowers don't worry, do they? They are here today and gone tomorrow, but God clothes them. So God is showing us. He said, if God knows how to clothe the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much does he know to clothe you of you of little faith? So we need to put in perspective that God loves us this morning and that he's faithful. If he's faithful to the birds and he's faithful to the flowers, we can be assured of this, he is faithful to us. Nobody said it was easy. This is something that we have to do. But the first key to unlocking anxiety in our lives is to understand that God loves us with all of his heart and that he's for us. And we put into perspective what we are concerned about. So if it's food, if it's clothes, if it's family, if it's work, we put it into this context. The God of all the universe, if he, likes, if he loves the birds and he loves the flowers, how much more does he love us, his children? And then the Apostle Paul continues the same theme. He talks about this. He says, do not be anxious about anything but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, give your requests, make them known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He says, don't worry, praise and pray. Because again, when we praise and pray, when we consider the birds of the air and the, and the flowers of the field, we are putting into perspective who, how great God is. But we also do that when we pray and praise, don't we? When we give our burden to God, when we pray to him, we are putting him in the place of being God Almighty who can deal with the things that we are going through. And when we praise him as well, when we give him all the honour and all the glory, again, we put him in his rightful place, king of the universe, sitting on his throne. So he says, don't worry, you need to pray and praise. I wish most Christians got a hold of that because most of us like to moan and groan before we pray and praise. Most of our, our, our mantra is, why, why pray when you can worry? Anybody been there? Just sitting there worrying about absolutely everything. But the apostle says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God for his goodness. The next part of this sermon, really, is not mine. It's Claire's. You know, she said to me the other day, she said, we were watching something the other sun, last Sunday night. There was a man, a pastor and his wife, and they did some tag team preaching. You ever remember the wrestling? I used to love going around my grandma's. <laughs> and it, World of Sport. Anybody remember World of Sport? Yeah. Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks. Yeah. That was good wrestling. That was not the American stupidity that you see right now. This was proper wrestling. This is where they proper hurt themselves. Do you know what I mean? You, do you know what I mean, Mr. Flute? This is giving the older, <laughs> you know, Shirley Crabtree. Jumping off the top ropes. That's, that's what we want to see again. That, amen. That's, that's, good. that's good wrestling. But anyway, they tag team. Sometimes there were three or four of them and they would go in the wrestle, ring, have a wrestle. And so this couple, this pastor and his wife were tag teaming, preaching. And Claire says to the boys, we could do that. And they looked horrified. <laughs> but 
we have been dealing with something over the last few weeks. And, and, and these are words of wisdom, not from me, but I believe that Claire shared something of, 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 of something of really significant and worth around anxiety that I just want to share with you this morning. Now, when we have been through trials ourselves, and listen, just because we stand up here and look like we've got it all together, don't think for a second we've got it all together. Because we all face trials and difficulties, don't we, of one sort or another. But there have been times in our lives when we, we have needed a word from God. We, we have put things in perspective as much as we can. We've praised and we've prayed. But then there are times when you need a word from God. And if you were here at, at uh, the Bible school on Thursday, we talked about this, about having a place to put our feet and trusting God and taking him at his word. So if I rewind you back some 28 years plus, we were really struggling to start a family. And it was on one Sunday in particular where it got to the point where we were broken. If you've ever been there, you'll understand what I'm saying. We were broken as a couple. We were broken. We had no place to go. We'd done all the praying that we know how to do. We put everything to perspective like we should do. And yet things had not changed. And then we reached out to a godly woman who gave us a word from God. And you know what? One word from God will change everything. So I say all, this, I say all that to say this. So during these last few weeks, we have a good godly Christian friend. I won't tell you whether it's a male or a female or where they live because you might know them. But this person has been a godly, godly influence in our lives. And during some of the difficult times, this person has rung us up and has given us a scripture or has sent us a snippet of a song or given us a word from the Lord. Aren't you glad you belong to a church like that? Listen, when you get a prod from the Holy Spirit, send it to somebody. Do you know what I mean? If God says send so-and-so scripture, get on WhatsApp and do it. You know what I'm saying? Because you do not understand sometimes the power of releasing something towards somebody else. But our friend has been godly and been full of faith and has stood with us. And during the Christmas period has got to the place where something in their life has become so huge and the anxiety levels have been so high, they don't know how to cope with it. And as good friends, both me and Claire spoke to our friend and I spoke to them and said, you need to put this in perspective. And if I told you what this person was worrying about, you go, I wouldn't even be breaking into a sweat. What are they even worrying about that for? Mate, you don't know until you know, do you? And sometimes it's the littlest thing that kind of cripples you. And it might be something that anybody else would say, well, that's just ridiculous. Why are you even worried about that? But it's that thing that actually drags you down. So you need to understand that that's, that's how anxiety works, doesn't it? It's not rational. Suddenly this molehill becomes a huge mountain. And our friend is in this position right now where they are struggling to hold on to anything and, and believe and trust God. And um, so, like a good friend, Claire seeks a word for them and gives it to them. And we speak to them again and they're still worried, full of anxiety. This person of faith is now struggling so desperately with the stuff that's going around in their mind. And there, here is the word of the Lord from Claire. She said to me, they need someone to stand with them and to believe with them. Listen, you might be going through hell today for something that really most people say, actually, that's not even worth worrying about. But listen, this is a safe place. And this church, I want you to know that we will stand with you and help you and get a word from God with you. And sometimes you need somebody to push you up over the wall. You can't see through the wall, can you? Sometimes you're looking at it and the whole of life looks like all I can see is this wall in front of me, this wall of worry, this wall of despondency, this wall of anxiety. Sometimes you need a man or a woman of God to push you up the jack seat and push your head over the wall. Amen? And that's what we want to do in this church. So you pray, you praise, you put things into context, but sometimes you still can't get the breakthrough you get a word from God and sometimes you still find it even difficult to hold on to the word from God. Well, listen, it's time as the believers here in Sedgley that we helped each other 
We want to see anxiety banished in this place, don't we? And there will be serious periods of our time and seasons in our life where we all will walk through that kind of level of anxiety one way or the other. Some of us show it, some other people don't show it. But all of us have concerns and worries. But I want you to know that God is able to deal with them for us. Amen. So that was a good word from Mrs. Hyde, wasn't it? Amen. That you need, sometimes you need a word and you need somebody to stand with you. And today we want to tell you this is a safe place. And we want to stand with you. You know, there are churches up and down the country today and they'll, they'll be preaching nice little sermons that mean nothing to nobody. I want us to be in this church where we're so connected with the word of God and with each other that we're spurring each other on for better things in God. Amen. We need to be doing that. Now, I said to the prayer meeting, not the prayer meeting, the Bible study, there should be some words that you ban from your vocabulary. Don't ever let me stand behind you and hear you say, I am worried to death. Those should be banned words for Christians. We are not worried to death. We're in faith for life. God has got us now. So I am not going to let fear and despondency break me. I am not worrying to death. I am not fearful to death. I am trusting in God. We want to make sure that we use the words that God... You know, it's the enemy that comes to steal, kill and destroy. What did Jesus say? I've come that you might have life. A life to the full. God wants us to have full life, isn't it? My friend Alison's here this morning. She's full of life. She's got, she actually, she's got a flag. She's been waving it. What really, really upsets me, though, it's got a Royce Church written on it. Will somebody make her a new flag? Can we wave a flag in here? A Royce, a Royce Church? Can we wave in a flag in mod? We need life, don't we? And uh, listen... I need you to hear some words from, from John's gospel. Jesus says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. So the problem is that anxiety can turn into fear. And fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is believing what we cannot see and fear always connects us with what we're frightened about. If you're frightened of dogs, I will guarantee you go to the park this afternoon, 16 bull terriers will trace you around. Have you ever noticed that? What we fear always connects us with what we fear. Always. But we are those that believe in God. And when we put our faith in God, it connects us with him and his word. But fear can destroy. Fear can, fear can pull us down. And, you know, we need to be those full of faith, not full of those that are full of fear. And I said to the Bible school, faith is trusting God for what we don't see and what's not yet. And so this morning, I want you to trust God with what you cannot see and what's not yet. Because I don't know about you, but the times that you have worry and anxiety, it's about things that you can't see and they're not happened yet. Our friend that's worrying themselves is worrying about something that has not happened yet. That probably will never happen anyway. But that will cripple you spiritually. So we need to let faith rise and displace fear and doubt and worry, don't we, in our lives. We have to trust God this morning that the God who saved us is the God who is going to keep us. And so you might be sitting here with all of those things that I've spoken about this morning. Headache, backache, stomach churning, feeling like tomorrow is going to be a disaster. I'm going to tell you, you belong to Jesus today and he's holding you. No wonder David says, the Lord's my shepherd. I ain't going to worry about it. I'm not going to want. He's going to guide me. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death and sometimes it feels like all hell's broken loose and it's dark. But I want you to know God is with us. He said, I will fear no evil because what? You are with me. You are with me. And I want to say today, and we're with you as well. If you're in that situation of anxiety and worry to the point of it affecting your health, not only your mental health, but your physical health, I want you to stand in this altar and we are going to stand with you and believe for a breakthrough. 
Because anxiety is, is, is real, it's crippling. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says this, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. You have to trust God. You have to throw the burden upon him because he cares for you. Now, in Bible school, we've been reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. If you go on the Bible app, that is the little acronym AMP, Amplified. What it means is like it shouts louder because there's more words in it. Let me read it from the Amplified Version of the Bible. This verse, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardness or fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound judgment and personal discipline. And in the brackets he said, Abilities that result in calm, a well-balanced mind and self-control. I think we all know that anxiety is when our mind is out of balance, where we are actually concerned about stuff disproportionately. I believe this morning that God has not given us that spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So again, I believe this morning, some of you were dealing with stuff from the past last week. I believe God wants to deal with you, some of you about worrying about the future, because if he's got your past... And he's got you right now, he's certainly got your future. We said the Bible study of Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the God that brought you through the last week is going to take you through this week and the weeks that are to come. You know, when we get worried and concerned from time to time, some of us get guilty about the fact that we get worried and concerned. But I want to tell you this, on the authority of the scripture, neither Jesus or Paul said that worry or anxiety was a sin or something to be ashamed of. Because it's part of our human makeup, that's what we are. But they did make it clear that God does not want us to be anxious and be crippled by it. So if, you're, if you've got anxiety today, don't think, oh, if I let everybody know in church that I am anxious, they know they think I'm a really, really poor Christian. No, we don't. No, we don't. But what we want to do is to you engage with God and for you to find a peace and a joy and somewhere to place your feet. And we want God to be able to help you deal with that, don't we? So let me read these scriptures again to you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and thanksgiving. And Jesus said, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. You know, the word of God is a double-edged sword. And when I preach some of this stuff, I know some of you get roughed up by it. And you think, I don't know how to respond to this. I, 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 this, is, this is making me feel bad, not making me feel good. But the thing with the double-edged sword is it, it, it cuts us open, but it's like a scalpel because when God cuts us open with his word, he doesn't cut us open to destroy us. He cuts us open to heal us, doesn't he? He cuts us open to cut out the rubbish and to put in his peace and put in his joy. So this morning, if you are struggling with anxiety on any level, or in some time in the future, if anxiety grips you, I want to say this. Put the anxiety into perspective. Think about the birds. Think about Robin the red breast who doesn't worry about his credit card. Think about the, the flowers of the field. Think about the goodness of God. Pray and praise him. Get somewhere to put your feet on a word. And if you can't hold on to that word for yourself, get somebody that will stand with you and believe God with you. And I believe that God wants to deal with some of that stuff even this morning. Aren't you glad that God's for us? You know, some people think the Bible is just such an irrelevant book. You know, what you need to do if you've got anxiety, you need to go to this person or that person. You need to do taking this or doing that. Listen, I'd rather put my feet on what Jesus said. And what the word of God has teach, taught us this morning. It's not easy, but that's what faith's all about. Faith is not an instant. You know, we all want the charismatic. I said that at the Bright Bustle as well. We all want the charismatic. You want to come out here and you want me to pray for you and you never have another worry again. That is not happening. That's not the way life is. That's not how we humans are made up. There will be times in our lives when we will all face those feelings and think, to, where am I going? What's going to happen? But when we face those times, we turn to the Lord, put things in perspective, stand with each other and see God move on our behalf. Isn't God good? Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yeah, it's important. It's important that we grasp hold of stuff that's real about life. There are churches right up and down our nation that are just 
perpetuated stupidity as far as I could see. I want to live with Jesus every minute of every day. Because he's concerned about my comings and goings. He's concerned about my bank balance. He's concerned about my health. He's concerned about my family. He's concerned about my relationships. He's, he's got me and he, and he loves me with all of his heart. And he wants to bless us this morning. So if, you, if you've got some anxiety, I want you to let it go this morning. And if you want somebody to stand with you while we're singing our final song and taking up our tithes and offerings, I want you to come to the altar. As we said last week, nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to look at you and go, what are they anxious about? We've got, we haven't got time for that in this church. I have no time for that. But what I have got time for is God encountering you and you going out of this place better than you came in. And the worst thing we can do is dig things into our soul and leave them there and leave things in the dark and pretend everything's all right when it's not all right. We need to get before the living God. So, Father, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just set people free. Where people have, through anxiety, made things bigger than they are, I pray that 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 will come into the right perspective right now. And that what tomorrow holds, Lord Jesus, that we will learn to trust you with. And that, Father, for those of us that are struggling even beyond that, Lord, give us people in church that will stand with us to see this fight through and win the battle and come out the other way and say, look what the Lord has done in my heart and in my life. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All hail King Jesus
Savior of the world and he holds every minute of our day in his hands and he loves us. Bless his wonderful name. It's been good to be in God's presence today. If you need somebody to stand with you, just, just mention it to one of us. You know, see, can we see me and one of the leaders, Josh, Steve, talk to Claire. But you know, we all need the encouragement that we get from being part of the church family. This is not a social club. We're a body and we're here to support each other. Anybody watch the gladiators last night? Just that look, that one lad, he'd, he'd lost his legs and, then he's, and even the guy that was competing against him got the crowd cheering him. And it just gave him that burst of energy right up that trampolator he went and right through the thing and gladiators ready. Fantastic. We're here to cheer you on this morning. And I don't feel like we're looking down at you going, well, they've, they've lost the legs. Have they lost their fa-? No, listen, we're cheering you on because we all get to win in this race, don't we? One day we're all going to stand before King Jesus and sing and shout his victory. So, Father, as we leave this place today, I just pray that you'd go with us. Pray that people would find a newfound confidence in you and, Father, supporting each other. And, Lord, we just thank you that you're speaking to us week by week and moment by moment. And I pray the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit will rest and remain with you for now and forevermore. Amen. All hail King Jesus. Good morning and God bless you.